Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting episode of Render Review. Today we've got entries from Sensi, Casper Armstrong, Neo Jetto, Steve Howe, VW Singer and Verga. If you are interested in supporting the channel feel free to visit the Patreon in the description down below or you can simply hit the join button next to the subscribe button and become a member of the channel. So let's jump into this then. Our first entry is from Verga. As you can see we've got this uh, female character holding a couple of I don't want to say lightsabers, but that does appear rather to be what they are. And you can see there's a nice light drawing your attention to her face and her upper torso. So the lighting from the swords isn't necessarily distracting, but you can see clearly the two parts of the image that you're supposed to be looking at, i.e. the face and the swords. Good expression on the face. You can see she's got kind of a mean expression going on there. She's got a don't mess with me kind of thing going on. And the background is nice, nice use of depth of field there. Really solid. Nice use of what appears to be D-Force hair, which is billowing in the wind. The pose overall is pretty good. I'm quite happy with the way that she's standing. There are obviously a couple of things that I would do differently if it were me. Not to say that that makes the image bad or anything, but the first thing I would do is I would be looking at the fact that the hair does seem to be billowing quite a lot. That implies that it's a fairly windy shot. However, it's only the hair that seems to be reacting to the wind. If you'll notice that this section of the outfit is kind of stock still, so it's not gripping the front of her body or pulling backwards with the wind there. Something that perhaps you could do with deformers. Uh, overall, it's a really strong image. But as I said, that would be one of the things that I would change. The other thing is that there doesn't appear to be much in the way of shadow around the feet. Now, that could just be because there's a strong light source on these swords, which is creating this pool of light behind the character and hiding the shadow. But you can see there's a very, very slight shadow just at the soles of the feet. But I don't know, there's something, this is again, this is just me, something that leaps out at me, something just feels a little bit strange about the feet. What I would probably do in this instance, if I were to take this into post and I would perhaps mask off the bottom half of the image so that you can increase the contrast in the bottom half of the image to make maybe these shadows stand out a little bit more. Um, it's just one of those things when you have lots of light sources in an image you get a lot of bounce and bleed through where the light is bouncing off other surfaces and kind of washing out your shadows a little bit so that's just something to be aware of but overall really strong image Virgo I'd be very happy with that most definitely so thanks very much for your submission next up we have this image from VW Singer which is a young lady sitting on a fence near a a kind of a, a Japanese looking pond there. She's got a phone in her hand and she's she's just chilling out looking like she's sort of semi posing for this photograph and she's got a bag with her there on the edge. So overall lighting's really nice. You've got a nice little bit of a light behind the shoulder there which is just separating her from the background a little bit more. There's no depth of field to speak of which everybody who knows me knows that I'm a big fan of using depth of field. For separation but it's not for everybody um, so that would be something that I would perhaps use if this were me the expression is a neutral she's got kind of a calm friendly warm smile on her face and she's looking straight at the camera another thing that I'm a big fan of of course it does give me a subtle hint of headlamp lighting um, there are obviously more scene lights there's one up in that direction there's one up in that direction um, but I'm getting the highlights on her face tell a uh, kind of indicating to me that there was a light source behind the camera as well which is just kind of giving you that flatness and and the shadow under her chin um, which tells me that the strongest light source is behind the camera purely because you're getting that that shadow there under her chin which again makes the image look like it was taken with an on-camera flash which it, it again it's up to you how you take your photos and how you do your lighting but again that would be something that I would just be careful of because it does tend to change the contours of the figure a little bit so overall the scene's really solid there's um you know you can only do so much if you're using a store-bought environment which this appears to be um, observations that I've made mainly around here if you look closely the character isn't actually holding the phone it's kind of hovering in her hand and her thumb 
and her fingers aren't actually making contact with the phone. So that would be something that I would be watchful for. She's making good contact with the fence there. Her hand here looks a little bit um, strange. It looks like it should be holding on to the fence a little bit of the sort of the grip or the position of the fingers implies that she's holding on but her fingers aren't actually touching um the fence so again something to be mindful of when you're posing your characters is just go the extra mile take the extra time to go in and check that the fingers are making contact um the heels and the toes of the, sh of the footwear are making contact with as you can see there's contact with the floor there hard to tell what the contact on that ledge is like but i'm going to assume that it's good um, so you've sort of done a little bit of work posing the feet, but the hands need a little bit of attention as well, my friend. Overall, though, really strong image again. Nice work. Definitely something you should be proud of. And just, you know, if you want to listen to the comments I've made, just take them on board and, and think about how you can employ those kind of things or how you can be more aware of those things in the future. Awesome. Next up, we've got this image from Steve Howe, who you may remember has had a couple of entries before, and each entry that he does is an improvement on the last one. So um, notwithstanding the comments that we made in the last entry, what we've got here is some kind of hawk woman with strategically placed wings that are covering up the necessary nudity so that we can get away with it. Um, and we've got uh, this character who's dressed as some kind of Spartan warrior style um, She-Ra kind of character fighting this creature. Um, overall, I like it. There's a good bit of depth of field employed here. Some nice scenery's being used here. There's a little bit of plasticity in the leaves, but I'm going to guess that this is a store-bought environment, so not necessarily much you can do about that unless you go into post and you tinker with them a little bit. Maybe add some kind of fog or something around there just to get rid of that plasticity a little bit poses are good there's a nice amount of um imagination been employed here the character does appear to be making good solid contact with both feet on the rock which is an uneven surface so that actually takes a little bit of doing cape is obviously being moved so that looks like it could be deforce or it could be a defamation or even a even a pose i'm not familiar with this outfit so i couldn't possibly say grip on the spear seems to be good Although um, it's uh, <laughs> it's one of those things, it's it's a it's a spear. So anyway, um, the only observations that I've made on this image is there's a little bit of plasticity, as you can see. There's a specularity on the skin of the monster, and the monster appears to be looking down here somewhere at the shield. But this character also appears to be looking at the back of the shield rather than at what she's attacking. So. Um, it could be an artistic choice. If it were me, I would focus on that a little bit. Just make sure that the, the characters are actually looking where they should would probably be looking. I don't honestly know. It's uh, Again, this is one of those artistic choices. She might be making contact with the top of the shield where this talon is about to grip hold of it. Um, hard to say, but at the moment, to me, because of the shadows around the eyes, it's very difficult to see exactly where she's looking, but I'm getting a distinct kind of looking at her own hand kind of feeling there. And there's a lot of, but I'm going to assume that this is down to sweat um, on the character's skin, a little bit of specularity on her arms and her chest. Um, so again, just things to look at and have a think about. Nice use of D-Force hair there again. Um, there's so we, a lot of motion there. Really strong improvements from the last one. Very little to pick up on this image in terms of things that I'd improve. So I'd be really happy with that if I were you, Steve. So thanks very much for another submission. Next up is an entry from Neo Jedo. And what we've got here is a young lady sitting on a sofa or a couch or a chair even, looking out of the window. First observation is that there's a really strong use of depth of field here. Really good. So you can see that there are things in the foreground there's this plant and there's this sort of corner of a chair and they're out of focus so they're not in obstructing the image too much and then there's a nice use of this flower that's coming out of that flower pot again just giving depth to the image because you can see we've got middle ground foreground and background going on again the depth of field is evident with the uh, HDRI lighting out of the window, which is really good. And it just makes sure that the character is looking at what they're supposed to be looking at, which in this case is this region of the image here. 
So that's cool. So what we've got here is an extremely freckly ginger lady, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Lots of freckles going on there. For me, when it comes to skin marking like that, I'm always a fan of less is more, but different people, different folks, different strokes and all that. Really good contact with the leg there. So the pose has obviously been tweaked and adjusted so that it actually looks like it's supposed to. There's no clipping going on, which is another bugbear. The characters sunk into the chair a little bit. Now this is where post-production comes in useful because what's happened is we are trying to portray the illusion that the chair is soft and that the character is sitting on it. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add some kind of creases in that area as well as adding some more shadow using our post-production tools, whichever software you use, just to give the illusion that the chair is soft and that she's sitting in it. Overall, eye contact out the window looks fine. Nice um, kind of styling with the hair. It looks like there's a little bit of clipping with the hair on the shoulders. So I don't know if this is deforced hair or not. It's hard to say. Um, sometimes when people make these deforced hairstyles, if this is a deforced hairstyle, um, you can see it's a strip hairstyle because there's a very strong um, pattern forming down there. Um, you can see uh, just a little bit of clipping there, so sometimes it does sink in and looks a bit strange, but that's not overwhelming. I wouldn't really pick up on that if I were looking at the image from a casual point of view. I'm, I'm trying to find um, critique to offer. Um, the other thing that leaps out at me with this image is that this highlight on the sofa here makes the sofa look kind of plasticky. Maybe she is sitting on plastic sofa. Maybe that's the reason that she's only wearing her pants sitting on there. Hard to say, but um, you know, something like that again just kind of leaps out at me. So it would be worth maybe taking the textures for this image and uh, dropping the uh, glossy layered weight down perhaps on that sofa. That might help with that problem. Overall, really strong image again. Definitely see a lot of awesome work this week for sure. So again, really well done, Neo Jello. Thanks very much for your submission, my friend. Next up, we've got an entry from Casper Armstrong. As you can see, there's a young lady who's apparently watching something scary on television and there is some kind of monster creeping up behind the couch, as you can see. Nice use of depth of field. Again, this stuff around here is nice and out of focus as is the background, but the character is nice and sharp in focus, which is what we like to see. The hiding behind the cushion thing, again, as you can see, there's a nice solid contact with the cushion where it counts. It's always hard with something opposed like this because obviously you know that in real life she'd probably be gripping quite tightly onto the cushion, so it's really hard to simulate those creases that would probably be there. Um, the darkness of the face is the really only, the only thing in this image that I don't like and that is purely because there is a really bright patch here which in real life would obviously be the case you would see that, the, that because this is closer to the light source that it would indeed be brighter but what it's doing is it's drawing your attention down to here when realistically your attention should be here and here on the two characters that are in focus. See, when I first looked at this image, I didn't actually see this dude until probably sort of, a, you know, maybe a, a 30 seconds after looking at the image because I was focusing on the difference of light between the face and the legs. So, and then all of a sudden when I sort of started focusing on this area, then this kind of guy leapt out. And so, um, depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to subvert the, the, the viewer from looking at this guy so that they see it like, you know, in those videos where people put fake ghosts in and they're really subtle and you don't notice them until you've watched several times maybe that was what you were going for in which case that's cool but certainly i would brighten the face up a little bit maybe in post just add a curves layer just to bring up the highlights there a little bit more so that there's less difference between the brightness of the face and the legs so that your eye is less drawn down to this area because the human eye is always going to look at the brightest area of the picture first um, so yeah, cool. Either way though, really nice effort. I'm, I'm really impressed with the standard of posing and the use of depth of field here. Um, it's just time to sort of look at lighting a little bit more perhaps, and uh, you're gonna nail it, my friend. So thanks very much, Casper. Last up for this week's entries is Sensi. As you can see, two young ladies, two friends, I'm gonna guess, having a little bit of a sit down and looking at the camera. So this is clearly a sort of a posed photograph 
which is totally cool. You use your depth of field. As you can see, the background stuff is slightly out of focus, which is going to draw your attention to these two. And the brightest area of the picture is indeed their faces and the arms in that area of the image. So this area is what your eyes are drawn to. Interesting choice of eye colour there. So I assume that based on the scar on her face, she's some kind of supernatural human being or being. Um, strong posing, as you can see and making nice contact with the knee. It looks nice and natural there. Most impressive though is the contact here with the chest of the other character. You can see there's a little bit of hovering there with that finger, so you could potentially drop that down onto the chest. But overall, the contact between the two characters is really nice and it actually feels like there's a connection there. And the expressions are really solid as well. The way that the both characters are looking at the camera does actually draw you in and you know it makes you feel like you're looking at an actual photograph of two people so you know ignoring the lack of photorealism that is inherent to Daz Studio um, this is a you know pretty much as close to a real photograph as you're going to get without doing a hell of a lot of post-production so overall that's a really strong image in there again posing as you can see there's no clipping there nice strong shadow there so you can see that our foot's making contact but it's not digging in and then obviously we've cropped the photograph which is a smart use of composition so that you can't actually see whether or not these characters are making contact with the sofa as a whole or not so you don't have to worry about using post-production to add fake creases in or anything like that so again really strong image there there is a little bit of what I'm going to say, there's a, there's a light here on the left hand side. It kind of looks like you've used one of the um, tricks that we use in post to brighten this area up, which is totally cool. What I would do is if I were going to use that effect, if that is indeed what you've done, is maybe extend it so that it spreads out a little bit more so it gives a kind of a hazy effect. Maybe come out around, around you know, this kind of area with the gradient just so that it adds a little bit of haze. Um, because what we've got there is a large amount of negative space in the image which we can fill up with either a lens flare or just a little bit of haze or some god rays or something like that that aren't going to distract the viewer from what they're supposed to be looking at which is obviously these two young ladies but um, it just fills that space a little bit more because on the right hand side you've obviously got the bookshelf with the mannequin and the books there which fill up that space quite nicely and then you've got the photos on the wall in the background which could very well be part of the environment but yeah, there's just that little bit of negative space there that um, you could add some kind of snazzy haze effect to that would just add a little bit more depth to our image. So either way, thanks very much for that submission, Sensi. Another awesome work. I'm really pleased with the standard this week. It's been really good. So thanks ever so much for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.